Have you ever wondered why you eat food? Sure, it's not so that you're just not hungry, but actually we eat food in order to be able to move around and to do the job that we're you know, set out to school and learn, or if it's just to go out and, and enjoy the day, we're walking or we're thinking or we're breathing. All of those require energy. And so far in the agricultural lessons we've looked at, um, uh, we've seen the conditions to make plants grow. This unit, we're gonna talk about the energy content in food. So if you stick around, we'll take a look at how we're gonna set that up and discover how much energy is in one kind of food or another kind that we'll talk about. Energy in food is used and um, stored in molecules. The molecules that those plants produce can be something like the seed itself, um, and they'll have lots of oil in those. And we're gonna take a look at this peanut um, from a plant, a seed that's there. Um, or they may be stored in the plant itself like sugars or starches. And that's gonna be the sugar that was used to make this little bit of marshmallow there. We're gonna take a look at the energy content in those. Now, to be able to do that, we're gonna use a little device to capture those and weigh it and see what kind of change in weight it is. I took just a paper clip here, which you can see, um, bent that as described the best we could. And I'm going to put then some tinfoil over that so that if the burning material comes through, you'll see that it won't catch on fire or anything. But that'll set this up nicely. Gonna wrap that little cardboard piece. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then you're gonna use that little circle that you may have bent with like a pliers or with your fingers. We're gonna put the material onto that. So that's the peanut. And uh, from there, we're gonna weigh that um, and get the weight of that material, which we'll get into in the uh, data collection phase. And we'll wrap this one at that time too, but I'm gonna say next, once you've got your, um, either your material like the sugar or the peanut uh, onto, your, onto your little sort of holding device, you're gonna put those underneath the can and you're gonna take the thermometer, place that into the can. I've taped it to a little stick or a splint um, this is just a barbecue stick, or a, uh, and I've, I've moved it probably an inch above the bottom so that when you put this thermometer in there, it won't sit on the bottom and gain the heat from the burning um, peanut or the sugar. That way it'll rest not on the bottom, but in the solution itself. Of course, we're going to add 100 mils of water to that can, and once this starts to burn, you're going to gather that heat by temperature change in that device. So... Those you'll be able to then, once this is done burning, weigh this again to see how much of the peanut has burned and you're gonna see how much heat goes into the water to determine uh, the calorie content of that material. And then you'll do the same with the sugar and we'll be able to compare um, approximately equal amounts um, of both fat or sugar and see which ones kind of got energy content in them. Now, to measure the heat change in the water that's, that's going on from the heating from the burning uh, food material, you're gonna go over to your computer and inside of SparkView, you're gonna open up the lesson 10 file um, on energy content of food. Uh, when that opens, you're gonna get a file that looks like this, which will have a temperature scale across the Y axis to see what temperature the water is that's going on inside of your can. And it's gonna have a time graph. You're gonna let that time graph roll until um, either the flame stops when you burn that material up complete, well, as much as you can. Um, and then you'll have a time graph from which you can do the analysis. Now that we've got all the food set up on the little stands, both the peanut, which is gonna be high in fat, and the marshmallow, which is high in sugar, carbohydrates, um, we're gonna set the little calorimeter here up with putting water in and we use the water because that doesn't get as hot as fast it takes a lot of heat to heat up water and that's good because we don't want to heat the thermometer up or damage that so take that a little bit higher above the bottom of the can so that'll only be sitting in water not resting on the metal itself okay excellent we're going to start with the peanut here, we're going to need to know what the mass is. So we're going to weigh this whole setup. 
Okay, in this example, we have 6.74 grams starting for this peanut and the case that holds it. Get that nicely positioned underneath. I'm gonna light this stick because it takes a little bit to light the peanut, to get the peanut started. If it takes you a couple of matches, uh, don't feel bad about that. Just keep using them. I'm gonna use this longer stick though so I can get that started. Okay, before I start that, I'm gonna make sure I start the data collection. Then we're gonna start the peanut on fire here, except for when it falls. So, that's just gonna take a second. Make sure it's hot. All right, we're gonna use this longer stick just because that will help to get that peanut started. Sometimes they are a little tough to get burning. There we go. Data collection has started. sure the peanut is burning on its own before I and then we're gonna let that burn which may take a couple of minutes so we're gonna speed this video up The flame has gone out on the peanut. It's burned as much as it can. And you don't need to burn it all. You just need to know how much it was you burned. I can see that the temperature is still going up a little bit. So while we're waiting for that to keep, you know, stop going up, I'm going to go ahead and move this and weigh it. We'll find out how much burned. Now that's 6.32 grams. So that's 0.42 grams of uh, peanut that had burned, 0.42 grams. All right. You see the temperature still is going up a little bit more. I'm going to let it finish warming up. While that's happening, I'll weigh out my sugar. And uh, on here, that's 9.44 grams at the beginning. It's just about rounded the corner. We'll put this in this place while we're waiting for that last little bit to go up. And we're going to have to change that water as well here in a second. But I want to make sure that it's stopped going up. I think we're there. A little bit more. Yeah, once the temperature stops going up, um, then you can go ahead and stop the collection. It's teetering right on the edge. I don't think it's going to stay up to 35.5, but. Yeah, I'd say that's that looks great. It's been sticking about there. So that's a nice flat top to that curve. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour this water out so that we can put new water in and we'll come right back to you in a second uh, when we're ready to, uh, to start the next experiment. And that way this will be nice cool water. All right, now we're going to pour a new 100 ml uh, water sample into our calorimeter. And if you're just doing this and you have two cans, that would be another way you could do that pretty quickly. Okay, let's put our thermometer back in. Excellent. Make sure the marshmallow is right underneath. I'm going to go ahead and start a second run. And this one should be able to start pretty quickly with just the match.
Try to start several places so that it burns as evenly as possible. I think I'm going to try to get it just a little bit more on this back side that it hasn't burned at all. But not that you have to get the whole thing to burn, you just want some of it to burn. But if it hardly at all burns, it may not, it's, uh, it may not weigh, weigh as much. Okay, so it looks like we've gotten to probably as much of it's going to burn. That's going to take just a second for that heat to work its way through the water. But it has stopped burning, so while I'm waiting for the temperature to reach the top, I'm going to go ahead and weigh this again. This one now weighs 9.22 grams. Okay, so we've burned about 0.2 grams of the sugar um, in this example. Make sure that that doesn't go up too much higher. I'm going to wait until it sort of flattens out before I stop the data collection. Let me go up maybe one-tenth more. Let's see here. to three minutes. Okay. So there we've gotten the amount of heat from both the marshmallow and the amount of heat that was given off here in run one by the peanut so that we can go in and look at the data more closely during the analysis. Now that you've gathered the data, I've gone and turned both runs on, and you can see both of the temperature changes that occurred, one for the marshmallow and one for the peanut. Uh, it's not fair just to compare them right off like this because you burned more of the peanut than you did of the uh, sugar content or the carbohydrates. So we're going to figure out how much per gram heat has been delivered. You're going to need the highest temperature and the lowest temperature to be able to determine that. And what you're going to use is the... Um, statistics tool at the bottom. You'll notice I've got run one, there's a little red box around the data marker. That means I'll be doing statistics on that run. So if I click on this, you can choose it to show what is the minimum and maximum values, and that'll help you to determine, if you don't want to just read them right off the graph, um, the highest temperature and the lowest temperature. And you can see there that it's about 9.56 degree, 9.7 degrees. Uh, change. You're going to want to record that and then um, you'll add the mass change and you're going to, instead of just dividing these two, it's not just how much the temperature change, but heat energy is measured in calories. So to determine how many calories that changed, you warmed up 100 grams of water. One calorie is defined as the heat it takes to warm one gram of water up one degrees. So you've got 100 grams in there, and if you've warmed them all up 9.7 degrees, you're going to have to take that times 100 to figure out how many calories came off that peanut. Okay, so you've got 9,700, 97 times 100, 9,700 calories in that peanut that were given off into here. Now, some of you may be familiar with the food calorie system, and you'll know, hey, normally I get 2,000 calories a day if I'm a bigger person, or a little less if you're smaller, but 2,000 calories a day, and I just had 9,600 calories. The difference between those is that when we talk about food calories, we're talking about the energy it takes to heat up one kilogram or a 1,000 times more water. So when I was saying there's 9,600 calories in that peanut that went into here, that is 9.6 of our food calories um, that we judge. And of course, we're larger mass, so that's why we deal with that larger amount of energy. So really, that one peanut has 9.6 kilocalories, which we call food calories. Now, to determine the energy per gram, you're going to take the total energy, 9.6 kilocalories if you'd like, or 9,600 calories, and divide by the mass loss for the peanut. You're going to do the same for the sugar and do the comparison. 
it's interesting to see when you're needing energy, for instance, um, to do work, um, which of these two oils or fats like nuts or other kinds of oil um, that we get, we get the oil from those nuts, um, gives you more energy or does that sugar give you more energy? And a lot of people say they like to eat carbs for the energy. Um, and maybe you'll be surprised to see um, which one has the most total energy. When you're done, you can answer the questions that are at the bottom and, um, and then uh, go ahead and do the last of those questions and hand that lab in. But thanks for taking your time and I hope you've learned a lot more about the energy content of food.